Welcome to the Big Data Analytics with PySpark, Tablao and MongoDB course. In this course, we will be creating a Big Data Analytics solution using Big Data technologies like PySpark for ETL, MLlib for machine learning as well as Tablao for data visualization and for building dashboards. We will be working with earthquake data that we will transform into summary tables. We will then use these tables to train predictive models and predict future earthquakes. We will then analyze the data by building reports and dashboards in Tablao Desktop. Tablao Desktop is a powerful data visualization tool used for big data analysis and visualization. It allows for data blending, real-time analysis, and collaboration of data. No programming is needed for Tablao Desktop, which makes it very easy and powerful to create dashboard applications and reports. MongoDB is the document-oriented NoSQL database used for high-volume data storage. It stores data in JSON-like format called documents and does not use row column tables. The document model maps to the objects in your application code, making the data easy to work with. So what you will learn in this course is you will learn how to create data processing pipelines using PySpark. You will learn machine learning with geospatial data using the Spark MLlib library. You will learn data analysis using PySpark, MongoDB and Tablao. You will learn how to create clean and transform data using PySpark data frames. You will learn how to create geo maps in Tablao desktop. And you will also learn how to create dashboards as well in Tablao desktop. Okay, so we have Tablao desktop open in front of us. So we will be using it to create our dashboard as well as our graphs, right? So right now we have the dashboard tab open. So our dashboard comprises of a geo map, right? So on the geo map, we have plotted our predicted earthquakes for the year 2017. And as you can see, each predicted earthquake value or point on the map is distinguished by a color. So here on the legend, we can see that we are using the orange color palette, which ranges from light to dark orange based on the predicted magnitude value. So if we have a dark orange colored point, we know that our predicted magnitude is close to six. And if we have a light orange point, we know that we have a lower predicted magnitude value and it's closer to 5.7, as we can see over here. So this is a simple visualization, meaning that it does not take any code to create. So that is why Tablao Desktop is such a powerful tool for creating visualizations of any kind, specifically for using um, big data as well, as well as for doing near real-time analysis of your data. Okay, so it also comes with an integrated toolbar as well as an integrated search. So let's say I want to search for earthquakes in Japan. So I can just type in Japan in my search box, press enter, and then the visual will locate Japan. And then we'll be able to see the surrounding earthquakes in that area. Okay, and then if maybe we want to look for earthquakes in the China region or India, perhaps it will take us to the India location. 
right as well as any other location that we want to zoom into and analyze the earthquakes in that region so we also have the legend that is created for us without any code right and then we also have additional visualizations that we will create so here we have the number of earthquakes for every year which we are using a bar graph to plot so you can see this red line which is an upward trend so the number of earthquakes are increasing as the years go by according to our data set so so it's either that or it could be that we are just collecting more data in the year 2000s than we did in the 1960s that could also be the case right but the trend line is basically a regression model that gets created by tableau so you don't have to create any write any code to create the regression model tableau creates it for us using our data points and then it plots a trend line okay and if we hover over the trend line we can see the r squared value and the p value for the model so we will also be visualizing the maximum and average magnitude of the earthquakes for each year ranging from 1965 to 2016 and we'll also be plotting trend lines so that we can identify the trend of our maximum and average earthquake values and as we can see here we have the most intense earthquake in a very long time right which is in 2011 and that's probably the highest um, earthquake magnitude according to our data set and we can see the trend line is almost almost looks like it's on the rise it almost looks like an upward trend but not quite and we can see that at the bottom we are visualizing the average earthquake magnitude values for each year and as you can see it's pretty much the same right in fact it even looks like it's decreasing according to our trend line which is a good thing which basically means that the intensity of our earthquakes is decreasing so our earthquakes according to this data set are becoming less intense as the years go by and there is maybe one earthquake one or two earthquakes with a higher intensity value that we will be able to see by analyzing the maximum earthquake magnitude okay so the magnitude of the earthquake is the intensity of the earthquake or the severity of the earthquake okay and we will also have a table that we will use to uh, display the type of earthquake in our earthquake data set so we can see that the standard earthquake is the most records in our data set and we also have different types of earthquakes ranging from explosions nuclear explosions and rock bursts okay so that is our basic dashboard that we will create using the data that we have collected transformed using PySpark and the prediction data set that we have created using our predictive model so we will be building summary tables after applying all our etl techniques and then we will create data that we can use in reporting okay so i hope you guys will learn a lot and you will also be able to take what you learn and apply it in your various field of expertise and you will also learn the power of this visualization tool and the speed at which you can rapidly create visualizations and dashboards right it also has a presentation view if you don't want to see the rest of the tool the toolbars you only want to see the visuals 
right? So the dashboard scales to the length of your screen. We will learn how to set that up. And if we want to get out of presentation mode, we can just click on that button over there. Okay, so thanks a lot for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the course. Thank you.